In this video, I'm going to show how to set up the mechanic for a bow and arrow. Now I have a checklist right here. And these are the things that I'm going to be making in this video. There's going to be three scripts. So this will keep me on track. But before we start writing the script, let's start by setting up our scene. So I'm using the same scene that I did in the previous video. And I made a 3D model of bow and arrow. I'll leave a link in the description where you can download uh, this 3D models if you need. But I've added them to my assets folder. And now let's add it to the scene. So we'll want to control the arrow separately from the bow. And uh, let's unpack this prefab. So let's go to prefab on pack. And I'll create a parent empty object for this prefab as well. And this is going to be the complete bow setup. Now let's go to the checklist and see what we're going to do next. First thing that I want to do is a controller. And the controller is going to be responsible for the rotation and the power of the bow. And the touch move and the reset position is some of the other things that we'll have to do as well. I want the controller to be in the bow setup, so be outside of the actual bow and arrow, because I'll be rotating the bow and arrow, and the controller needs to be outside of it. So I'll create an empty object, and we'll call it controller. Now you can skip the next step, but I will add a 3D cube inside of my controller, and that is so that visually you guys can see where the controller is located and how the controller is actually working. I'll scale it down so it's not going to be too big. So something like that. But there is that white cube and that's going to be inside of our controller. Okay, let's go back to the controller and create our first script. So let's do script machine. I'll be using embedded for this added graph. And the first thing on the controller script is the touch move. So I'm going to remove this and I'll add the touch move node. Now this is one of my units from the package. It's still currently on sale. So if you don't have it, you can grab that. But I'll make a separate video on how to create this touch move a little bit later so that you can replace it. But for now, I'm just going to be using the touch move unit. This is going to save a lot of time. And what that touch move unit is going to do is allow us to drag that cube that we created or the controller. And that's what we're going to be using for the controller. So we're done with the touch move unit. And now we want our controller to rotate the bow. The way that we're going to control the rotation is by using transform set right. And in here we need to pass the direction our arrow is going to be facing. And the direction is going to be the negative of our position. So we can take the local position of our controller and multiply it by negative one. And that's going to be the direction that we want the bow to be facing. So let's get a local position. Then multiply it by a generic and we will pass a float value of negative one as the B value. And this computed value, we can pass it in as the set right. Now the object that we want to rotate is the bow and arrow. Let's go to our scene and find that bow and arrow object. So let's select that object. And we want to rotate it when we're holding the mouse button. We can use the mouse input event and look for the hold option. Connect it here. And this is going to be our rotation logic. So now if we grab that cube and move it back, you can see that the bow is always pointing away from the cube's direction. So that is the logic for the rotation. We can check that off. Now we need to add the logic of calculating the power that we're charging that bow at. So let's go back to our controller script. And again, we can use the local position to compute the power that we're charging. And the power is going to be based on the distance that you move the controller back. So let's duplicate these three units. And the first multiplication is going to be the controller for how sensitive our charge is going to be. 
and I know for the length of my arrow I will need it to be a float of 0.5 that will be the distance that I'll have to drag that controller to get the full charge but you can adjust it if you want it to be more sensitive now after I multiply I want to get the magnitude of our vector and that will be the power that we're charging the arrow at so let's look for vector magnitude and we're using the vector 3 and we need to make sure that our power is actually capped from 0 to 1 that is the power that we used in the previous videos and we're going to continue using that in this video as well to cap it we can use the minimum unit and for the b value we can pass a float value of our maximum power charge after we do all of these calculations now we can set our variable and we have already created the scene variable in the previous videos so we'll reuse that here as well so we we'll want to set value pass that value as the value input and we will update this also whenever we hold the left mouse button so let's add a group here as well this is going to be our power and let's go to the next one so power is done now we need to reset the position and that is so that when we release the button the controller gets reset so let's use on a mouse input whenever our mouse button is up we want to set our local position to the initial position that we want it to have and the way that I'm going to calculate the local position is get the local position and then create a vector 3 clamp magnitude and in here we can pass what's the starting distance that we want for our controller so I'll set it to 0.4 but you can change that value if you like so that's our reset position let's test it out click play so if I drag this cube you can see that we're changing the direction and then if I release it the controller jumps to 0.4 mark one thing that we can do is move the controller back so it starts at a small charge position and that will make it easier for the player to shoot the first arrow so with that we are done with the controller so we can check that off that is all that we had to do for the controller and now we can start working with the arrow I'll keep the cube in the controller for now but later on we can uh, remove it now for the arrow we want to create a prefab from this so let's create an empty parent for it and we'll call it arrow prefab now for this arrow I want to move it forward so that my starting point is closer to the center and then I'll move this prefab backwards so it'll be closer to the controller so that's going to be our starting position and for this arrow we will add a box collider 2d let's edit it and holding all down we can scale one side and it will scale the other side as well I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner than uh, the visual but you can play around with it and see what works better for you and now we can add a rigid body 2d for it and the last thing that we'll need here is a script machine but for this one we'll actually create a graph since it's going to be used inside of a prefab so I'll call it arrow graph click save and now we can create the prefab so let's go to our prefab folder drag this in here and we got our arrow prefab to speed things up we can go to our cannonball and a look at the bullet graph that we're using here and the script that we've created in the previous video is actually going to be a pretty good base for our arrow so we're just going to select and copy that let's go to our arrow prefab and edit the graph here so let's remove this part and paste those nodes in here now we're not going to launch the arrow on start instead we're going to launch it whenever our mouse button is up so uh, let's look for the mouse input event and whenever the mouse button is up that's when we want to launch it but we want this arrow to be launched only once so we'll use the once event here 
And since we have our arrow spawned when we're aiming, we need to make sure that our rigid body 2D simulated is turned off so that the arrow won't just fall down from the bow. And once we are launching it, that's when we want to enable that rigid body simulated back on. So let's grab that unit, set it to on, and we can continue by setting the velocity. And here we have a three second life for our arrow. And let's make the arrow live a little bit longer, 10 seconds. If you want them to stay forever, you can remove this destroy object. But one more thing that we'll have to do is make sure that our arrow is no longer a child of a bow. Otherwise, if we rotate the bow after we launch the arrow, the arrow is going to be rotating with the bow as well. So let's set parent and you can just leave it as none. That's going to set the root as our parent. Let's just clean it up a little bit. So that's going to be the launch script. Now we'll need to add a object variable for velocity. So let's go to object, velocity, add it. And for velocity, let's set the value to be 40. Okay, so now let's try aiming and releasing. And now you can see that the arrow is flying, but as soon as it hits, it doesn't get stuck to that object. It just falls down. So that is one of the things that we need to do. And also the arrow is not rotating like you expect. So we'll need to do that as well. So back to our script again, and we have successfully launched it. And now we have rotation, power charge and stop physics. So let me actually move that first. Let's add the script of stopping the physics after we hit something, and then we'll go back to the rotation. So inside here, what I'm going to do is add on collision enter 2D. And the first thing that we'll do is turn off the simulate so the physics can be turned off. And also, if you don't want the arrows to be hit by other arrows, you want to disable the collider. So let's look for collider 2D and set enable. So turn those two things off. So this unit is going to stop the physics simulation. And this unit is going to make sure that the arrows won't collide with each other. So we can test it out again, charge that arrow, release it. And there we go, it gets stuck. Let's name that stop physics, mark that off. And now we can look at the rotation. For the rotation, we're going to use a similar approach that we did for the bow rotation, and it is transform set right. And now we need to pass in the direction here. Now, the direction is going to be the velocity of our game object. So let's look for the rigid body 2D, get velocity. And that's going to be the direction that we want the arrow to be facing. Now we want to do this on update, but we want to update this only when the arrow was launched. So for that, we will use the toggle flow. By default, it's going to be turned off. So uncheck that. And whenever it's on, that means that we want to calculate that rotation. We will turn it on when we launch the object. So switch it on after we have cleared the parent. Then we also want to turn it off when the object is no longer flying, which is when it collides with an object. So connect this to off. So this is going to be our rotation. Let's test it out. So now if we shoot the arrow, you can see that the arrow is rotating. So that is it for the rotation. And now we want to display the power charge. And that is so that when we're moving the controller, we display how the arrow is being drawn visually as well. So let's go to our arrow graph. And how we're going to draw the arrow is by setting the local position in the x direction. So we'll create a vector 3. And for the x position, we will use the value that we have for the power the value for the power is from zero to one. So we can use a lerp unit to go between the values that we want for the arrow to be positioned at. So let's set it to one to negative one and power is going to be our T. This value is going to be passed as the 
x value of our set local position and we want to update this whenever we are holding the mouse down so on mouse event whenever we're holding we want to update it but we want to stop this update as soon as we release the button so the position won't be touched after we have launched the arrow so let's use toggle flow unit again by default is going to be turned on and whenever it's on we want to set the local position and then when we release the button on up event we want to turn this calculation off so this is going to be our power charge and that is it we can test it out so let's charge that arrow and you can see that the arrow is moving with our controller but as soon as we get past the maximum value for the power charge, we can see that the cube is moving further away, but the arrow is not moving. So let's charge it to the maximum power, release it, and the power gets reset. That's the power charge for the arrow, and we are done with configuring our arrow. The last thing that we have left is to reload the bow. So if we're reloading the bow, we can go to the bow and arrow and add a script machine here. Let's use an embedded, add it, and I'll make a simple reload script here. So on mouse input, whenever we release the mouse button, I want to trigger this once so that you won't get multiple arrows spawned at the same time. And after the once unit, I want to wait for some time before I spawn the next arrow. So let's add a wait for second unit here. But the wait for second unit is using a coroutine. So let's select a mouse input event. Make sure we turn on the coroutine. And for the delay, we'll set it to one second. So one second after we release the arrow, the next arrow is gonna be spawned. You can increase that time if you want. And now we can say game object instantiate and we want to specify the parent for the game object that we want to instantiate it at. For the original, we want to find our arrow prefab. And for the parent, we want to pass in this. After we have spawned the object, we want to reset this once unit so that we can spawn it again after we have launched this arrow. So that's going to be the reload logic. Let's move the bow setup back here and let's test it out. We can remove the cube now so that it won't display where our controller is located. And here we go. Now you know how to make a bow and arrow mechanic. I hope you found this useful. Be sure to click on the like button and I'll see you in the next one.